one of my clients is Williams Warren. You may have heard of them. Uh, they have created the world's first personal brewery. Um, so it's a pretty cool invention. It was invented in a St. Helier's garage. Uh, the inventor is Ian Williams on the left there. So he is New Zealand's youngest brewmaster. Um, he's worked at all the major breweries around the world, um, including uh, Heineken, Carlsberg, Tiger. Um, the gold medal that you see on the Tiger bottle, he, he won that um, for Tiger Breweries in Singapore back in the 90s, I think it was. And so basically he knows his stuff. And um, one day uh, his uncle uh, challenged him basically, you know, you, you know how to make beer and make it taste delicious. Um, can you fix homebrew because it tastes like crap? Um, and so Ian basically thought, you know what, I'm going to step up to the challenge. He sold the house um, and put the money into... Uh, tackling this challenge of creating uh, a machine that would make commercial quality beer uh, that could be accessible to anyone. And so, so today's presentation is really about how we use PR and social media um, to achieve business results um, on the back of this awesome invention. And uh, the job was made a bit easier by the fact that it was such a compelling and amazing device um, so um, the opportunity was um, that more than 30% 30, 30 of New Zealand males have tried um, home brewing in their lives, um, which is a huge stat. Uh, most have not carried it through because of the poor quality beer produced and the time taken. Usually it takes about six weeks from start to finish. I, I'm not speaking from experience because I don't have that sort of patience. Um, and the global beer market is worth 330 30 billion dollars, or that was in 2011 anyway. So there's, there's a huge opportunity there. Um, and a little bit of beer trivia, does anyone know what the biggest consumer of beer is? Which country is the biggest consumer of beer? East Germany. East Germany? Good guess, but it's actually China. And um, you can see there China's really taking off um, just in the last uh, few years. So, um, yeah, there's huge opportunity um, for a New Zealand um, invented device to, to be sold to the world. Um, so this is the machine. Um, it's a, just a bit bigger than an espresso machine. It holds 23 litres of beer. It brews beer from woe to go in seven days uh, for a, I think that's for an ale, for a lager or a pilsner, nine days, which is still incredibly fast. Uh, and because it happens all in the one unit, it's literally the freshest beer you'll drink in the world. Um, with big breweries, a certain amount of oxidation takes place uh, with each transfer from vat to vat. Uh, because this happens all in the one device, um, you're getting the least amount of oxidation, which means you're drinking the most flavoursome and fresh beer, which is a good thing. Um, so we were briefed in Ian's garage in St Helier's on a, at about... 10.30 on a, um, on a Monday morning and obviously we had to try quite a few of the beers while we were there and needless to say we ended up going back to the office a little bit red in the face. Um, but based on what Ian wanted to achieve, um, these, these were our objectives effectively, was to um, achieve global uh, media coverage and social media exposure uh, and the key thing, well, Ian's key goal, which is what we really focused on, was generating sales uh, in New Zealand and overseas uh, and also attracting further in investment. So though media coverage um, was desired as a P PR company, uh, a lot of our clients um, see us as a way of delivering coverage or editorial and media. Um, the, the key objective for Ian was generating sales. So we had to do that whatever way we could. And so naturally, social media um, looked like a good way of achieving that goal. So our strategy uh, was to basically, we needed, we needed to give this thing credibility. It was a $6,000 machine. Uh, so naturally, people don't part with $6,000 uh, readily. We had to establish credibility for the machine and um, for Ian as well as the inventor of the machine. So part of our strategy involved, um, I guess, bringing on third-party endorsers and um, 
establishing credibility for Ian himself so that um, people would buy into this device. Um, we also wanted to get away from, well, we had to, we had to be safe. Obviously, with our PR hats on, um, we we're promoting a product that produces alcohol. So we had to be sensible in the way that we marketed it and didn't want to be seen to be promoting excess consumption. So um, part of getting around that was positioning it as um, a device for beer thinkers and uh, you know, really highlighting the science and the craft behind it. Um, the other thing we needed to do was, you know, you only get one chance to launch a brand and to launch a product globally. So we wanted this to go around the world. We didn't want this to stay in New Zealand. And so one of the most cost-effective ways of doing that is to streamline um, the, the media inquiry process. So we developed um, one of our ideas was having an online media centre so that media from around the world could get what they needed, high-res photos, video, uh, the media release, that sort of thing, um, without having to give us a call or at the early hours of the morning, that sort of thing, which was quite nice for us working on it. Um, so our tactics were, um, yeah, a grand reveal event, uh, media basic media relations, um, an online media centre, and then social media integration, which I'll talk about in more detail now. So the launch event, we had it at the Auckland Art Gallery in the Art Lounge, which is quite a nice space. Uh, we invited various VIPs and celebrities um, in order to get that third party endorsement and to give it credibility. We had the Minister of Science and Innovation there, Dr Wayne Mapp, um, the crew from Shortland Street and the Almighty Johnsons. Um, we also had um, a whole lot of beer enthusiasts and beer writers, people from the beer community, uh, which was great. A uh, whole lot of pub grub, sausage rolls and chips. And we had uh, five machines around the room so people could, could sample the different beers. And I think, um, yeah, there was one with a banana infused lager in it and one with uh, a chocolate stout. So, you know, Ian was able to produce his, uh, his best beer and have people sampling them at launch. Um, of course, media were there as well, journalists, and um, having them sample the beer and talk to people who were sampling the beer as well um, worked well, and you'll, you'll see that in the coverage that was achieved, uh, traditional media coverage anyway. Um, so yeah, that, that basically gives you an idea of, of our traditional you know, launch event um, for PR, which was uh, part of the launch. Um, social media wasn't really part of it at that stage, but it gave us a base to build from. It gave the product credibility when people were talking about it online. That, that they could see that, you know, um, traditional news media had cover it, covered it. It wasn't just um, something that was on a random blog. So um, that was part of establishing credibility for the product itself. Oops. Ah, there we go. Um, and you can see as well um, uh, more media coverage there, just some examples of the coverage that um, came through. And one of the things we did, because obviously um, three, 3 News became a key um, media outlet for us, we um, pitched a story to the online editor under embargo, gave him an interview, um, as well as Tony Reid, the guy who did the 6pm piece, and so right from launch, um, we had this great piece which included words, pictures and, and video that um, other news websites could look at and other um, bloggers and media. So uh, the next part of it was obviously stream, streamlining the process um, for media inquiry. So making sure William Swan had um, all the information that media needed and bloggers needed on their website. So having um, a media kit uh, with the media release images and um, broadcast quality video, uh, high res images, basically anything that could be useful for a blogger or media had to be in there because um, if we were responding to the thousands of e emails and uh, requests, it just would have, would have been a nightmare and we didn't have a large budget for this um, you know that they didn't have much money to spend so obviously in PR we 
uh, bill our time. So we had to try and keep our time to a minimum, and this is one of the ways that we did that. Uh, social media integration. So basically, Ian had never used social media before, um, but being the key beer thinker that he was, the brewmaster, he was a huge asset to the brand. So we didn't want to try and tweet on his behalf. What we um, decided to do was we ran a social media 101 workshop with him, um, helped him set up the profiles, so the initial um, layout, and uh, sort of held his hand through the process process so that he could see how to do stuff and uh, for the first few weeks we were on the phone to him regularly and he was like how do we do this, how do we do that, which was cool but but now he's, he's tweeting and Facebooking like a pro. Um, yeah, so ran like a, a workshop with him, um, set him up with the various apps, showed him how to use TweetDeck, um, uh, things like that. Um, and that's really been, been huge for him because now he's directly uh, in conversation with his customers, you know, like when people brew a beer, um, they'll talk about, oh, this went well, this didn't, and he can give them immediate feedback um, without us having to, uh, you know, be the, the in-between. Um, and he's getting quicker at it as well. His responses are get, getting a lot quicker, and he's getting some really good engagement uh, with his followers. So um, I think that that's been key in terms of, um, yeah, creating an online community uh, that, Basically, everyone who's bought a Williams Warren um, is engaging with them via those channels if, if they've got a Facebook profile, which is nice to see as well. Um, the other thing for this campaign, this activity, because we didn't have a large budget, we didn't use any expensive monitoring uh, software. We basically just used free tools like TweetReach and social mention. So, um, yeah, there are good things you can do. Um, free tools that you can use to get an idea. It's, it's not the most accurate way of doing it, but um, yeah, it still works, which is good. So basically when we were planning what we were going to do, you know, our traditional media activity, um, we came across this video, and this video here is the instructional video on how to use the machine. It was meant to be quite a serious um, a serious video explaining exactly how to use it, um, but we sort of saw it, had a little bit of a giggle, and thought it looked a little bit more like beer porn. Um, so I'll just, I'll just play it to you the first um, two and a half minutes of it. With the Williams Warren Personal Brewery, you can now produce quality beer at home in just seven days. We've made it so straightforward and easy. All you need to do is set aside about an hour and a half to get the brew going, then a few minutes for the next six days, and on the seventh, you'll be drinking your very own beer. We'll supply you with the freshest of ingredients, and we've developed the best brew combinations so you'll be able to make your very own beer that can truly compete with premium brands. And you can also develop unique combinations, experiment with gourmet flavors, and even invent new beers that have never been crafted before. So, let's get started. Clean the personal brewery. Wipe away the yeast residue from your last brew. Spray the inside with a special cleaning solution and give it a good rinse with water. This is a critical step, so take your time. Fill the cone with water, turn the temperature controller to pasteurize and the machine will do the rest. Heating up and sterilizing the whole system, switching off automatically when it's all done. Add in the malt and mix it through the hot water. Then fill it up to the 23 litre mark with cold water. Sprinkle on the yeast and close it up. Set the fermentation pressure and temperature.
Now the yeast starts fermenting and the pressure builds up so you need to adjust the relief valve to get the carbonation just right. Check it every day and adjust to the perfect level for your brew. The Williams Warren Personal Brewery also keeps the fermentation temperature just perfect for the beer style you're brewing and it all happens perfectly controlled in just five days. Temperature is kept constant and just right. That is, exactly right for the brew you want to do. Just two more days and you'll have perfect cold beer ready to drink we, we straight from your we own personal brewer. Turn to drinking temperature five degrees Celsius. This will help clear yeah, the we, beer we can, we can as the fermentation it. finishes. It, it goes on, it goes on, but um, we basically saw that video um, prior to the, the day before the launch um, and we thought this is 100% beer porn, you know, the, the suave and cheesy narrator, the, the slow uh, close-ups and whatnot, the beer frothing over. Um, so we thought we could have a bit of fun with this. Uh, we, um, yeah, we sort of identified it as potentially viral content, um, uh, which was cool. So um, basically, when we after launch, after we'd sent out the media release, and you know uh, the world was starting to talk about the Williams Warren, we we started to look for for blogs that may have um, had this video on it that we could submit to social news websites. So. Um, and the key thing here was obviously with social news websites, you don't want to submit a press release that just won't fly. But then as well, um, you don't want to submit a real sort of mundane uh, three news piece. Um, so we looked for a blog that um, that had written something on the Williams Warren that had a bit of colour, that was a little bit fun, that included this video. Um, and yeah, we submitted it uh, to the social social news websites dig fark read it and delicious now each of them have different ways of s submitting stuff but um basically the key one that we used w was fark um basically fark is uh, a website that gets uh about 2000 link submissions a day and it's followed by most of the world's major news organizations so if you get something on fark then it goes off pretty much. Um, because it gets so many link submissions, only 5% only of the links um, actually get approved. So you've got to have a, have a pretty witty uh, tagline. So you can see down the bottom there, our tagline uh, f for the link to the um, blog was, the best beer porn you'll see all day, spoiler alert, climax occurs at 2 minutes 57, lots of head. Um, and referring to that shot of the beer frothing over. Uh, and it just went nuts from there. So we had, uh, I think within 12 hours, it had had um, 12,000 uh, click-throughs. And the sorts of people, the thing to remember with this is the thoughts, sorts of people that were clicking through um, were not just your Joe blogs. These were uh, people, online influencers and other news organisations. So to have 12,000 influences of, of the news agenda um, and the online um, space uh, clicking through was a great thing. Um, yeah, basically, yeah, it kind of highlights, you know, there's that whole idea of the, the two-step flow. I'm not sure there's a communications theory model of the two-step flow. Um, and I think, you know, obviously that's changed over time, but I think there's still a, a relevance um, to when it comes to social media as well. A lot of online influencers now, um, you know, are getting their information from elite media sources um, that not too many people know about and then, you know, spreading that through their networks. And, and often it's the mass media which is catching up at, at that point and are, are behind these opinion leaders. So um, to be getting into um, social news engines is, is key. Uh, for, for a product like this anyway, you know, um, because it had um, such great appeal, there was so, it was unique, it was interesting. Um, and yeah, all, that mixed with a, a witty tagline and it was sure to, to, to go off. So a few of our results from that and um, it was, you know, we, the traditional media coverage was was great in terms of New Zealand spreading the message around New Zealand, but it was really um, the social media and that um, FARC link that actually um, took it global and, and gave it uh, more visibility to um, 
bigger news organizations. And so from that, if you were to Google Williams Warren prior to launch, you would have got zero results because there was no reason that you would. Uh, after launch, more than 100,000 results um, came through on Google for Williams Warren. This is three months after launch. Um, approximately 20 million social media imp impressions, and that's a conservative e estimate. Um, obviously, I mentioned before, we were using free tools like TweetReach and social mentions, so it's, it's hard to be accurate, um, but that is a very conservative estimate based on a whole lot of mathematics, which I won't go into. <laughs> Um, the beer porn video was viewed more than 170,000 times. Um, the Williams Warren website had, uh, yeah, 370,000 hits. But I guess the thing that we were most proud of um, was the fact that we had achieved um, Ian's key objective, which was um, sales and um, investment. So he had over 200 offers of distribution in 50 countries, including three major US department stores. Um, a funny story, he actually had um, rich people in, in dry states um, in the Middle East giving him a call and flicking him an email um, saying, how, how can we get one of these? And um, he may or may not have sent a few unbadged ones over labelling them as soda streams. <laughs> You can actually make soft drink in the Williams one as well, just in case you're wondering. Um, so yeah, he um, sold out of his first batch of 70 machines and he's since been able to get um, further investment from a large Asia-Pacific brewery. He signed on an uh, American um, distributor and an Asian distributor based in Singapore. Um, so, so things are looking up. He's, he's on his second generation model now and he's got, already got a waiting list of 430 people. Um, so people, yeah, there's a lot of people who, who are wanting to get um, one of these machines. And yeah, I guess for us, this was kind of, well, for me personally, uh, I, I found this a great campaign to work on because it was one of the first campaigns that I'd been involved with where you could actually see a tangible result between social media activity and business results. And and I guess the challenge is uh, we had a unique set of circumstances with this. Um, obviously not every business is going to have a product like this. Not every business is going to have a mundane instructional video that you can cheekily send out as beer porn. Um, but um, there, are, there are a few things um, we, we can learn from it. So I, I guess my brief was to talk about um, some of the things we can learn, um, uh, how biz, uh, social media can affect business results, which is a really gnarly brief, um, just putting it out there. It, it's a hard question to answer because, yeah, it relies on a whole lot of factors, but I'll try to tackle that in the second half of my presentation. Oh, all this was done. Oh, we also won a Prince Award for it as well. So um, the Prince Supreme Award. So we were pretty stoked with how that um, campaign worked for us. Um, so a few key reminders. Um, establish some credibility. I think um, the key thing with um, submitting to you know, the likes of FARC is that a whole lot of news organisations are looking at that website for content as well. So um, they, you know, want content that... Is, is credible and it's not just um, pie in the sky. So establishing credibility was key using, um, uh, you know, the likes of Wayne Map and, um, you know, journalists to endorse the product um, was key to getting credibility. Uh, we didn't take it too seriously. We had a great client in Ian Williams who basically just said, look, um, I don't understand PR, so just do what you want. And um, that was cool. It worked in our favour. <laughs> Uh, make use of free online tools such as the media monitoring, um, I mean the social media monitoring tools, but also the likes of those social news, in, uh, news websites which are free to use. Um, if you're looking at you know, making significant product announcements, that sort of thing, um, it's good to, to have visibility of those websites and know how to use them properly. And also share people's views of the product. Um, I think one of the cool things was after we submitted the, the link to the Noisecast blog, um, the guy um, put out a tweet saying, oh, whoever um, 
fucked that, thanks heaps. Um, he was stoked because his website just got 12,000 hits. Um, so, but it also means that he was acting as another endorser, another third party, so it wasn't us telling people about how awesome Williams Warner is, it was someone else who had seen the video. And yeah, social media is resistant to overt advertising. So as I say, like had we submitted a press release um, to the social news websites, it just wouldn't have cut it, you know. So um, make sure you can share compelling and interesting content um, because that's what's going to be shared the most. So yeah, there are no silver bullets. Um, we we had a world first product, which um, which helped us out. You know, um, the news values I talked about earlier. Obviously, having a world first is a good thing. Um, it was also you know, thirty percent of Kiwi males have tried home brewing, so it's 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 an issue that affects many people. I just thought I'd throw some social media stats up there. I think they're cringe-worthy worthy ones, actually, based on uh, Jennifer's last presentation. But, um, yeah, I mean, there are stats out there um, that we can focus on, but at the end of the day, um, I think if you focus on them too much, you end up more confused. Um, so tips to achieving tangible results. I think these are some universal things I kind of think, you know, could apply to any business is first of all having a kick-ass product slash or service um, and like an example of that double down awesome product um, you know people loved it um, and I think you can you really notice it when it comes to um, the fast food industry a lot of people are coming out with these sort of novelty unusual foods um, the KFC pie etc having a product that's interesting and quirky um, obviously is, is the first start to having a good business result. Um, consider the social news, uh, the news values first. Um, and these are, this is like PR 101. Um, uh, in order for it to have relevance to traditional media, you know, it's got to have prominence, it's got to impact, it's got to, um, you know, have impact on, on many people. Conflict is a news value. We obviously didn't use that one. Um, it's got to be timely, unusual, interesting and it kind of forms a little acronym called picked up um, so if you want your story to get picked up that's how you remember it um, but there's also other things to consider when it comes to social news values and it's really important to consider humor technology and cats which all do very well on social media as well I think we ticked off two of, two of those with Williams Warren and that's Maru um, another key thing, obviously, uh, Williams Warren, they, they didn't um, have a lot of budget and we had an early discussion with Ian Williams about, well, um, you know, should he be advertising as well? Our advice to him is no, don't, don't advertise. Um, obviously, you want other people to tell your story before you have to pay for advertising. As soon as a journalist sees um, an ad for a product, they'll they'll basically switch off. They won't want to know. It's no longer news. So um, even when it comes to social media, like people want to be the first to be able to share information and inform their peer groups. Um, so by you know, plastering a whole lot of advertising everywhere, you're taking that privilege away from people. So um, yeah, always think, do the PR, um, traditional PR and, and social media first and let people share it before you um, try and control the message too much and pay for advertising. Uh, know your networks. Obviously, the way that you use Dig is going to be different to the way that you use FARC. Um, th the rules of each site are different. With FARC, there's a whole lot of FARCisms um, which you should use before... Um, you should get to know before you use the website, otherwise none of your links will get approved. Um, with Dig, it's a bit easier, and things like um, BuzzFeed, you, you just post stuff, but no one will follow you uh, unless you've done the groundwork first. No one will see it. Use any and every digital dis tool at your disposal. Um, these are the tools we've used for Williams Warren. We, we literally tried everything. Um, thought, hey, might as well give it a go, you've got to be in to win. Um, so 
Yeah, I mean, if you're not sure, just give it a try. Has anyone seen there's that, that new Storify um, platform? Looks interesting, tried that today. Um, so yeah, just don't be afraid to give things a go. Um, may not work, but it m might work as well. Um, and also remember creativity. There's a whole lot of research out there um, that um, links creativity to effectiveness. So um, uh, basically, if you look at the most creatively awarded advertising slash marketing campaigns, um, they're also the most effective ones and the ones that win all the Effies awards. Um, so creativity, you know, gets you noticed. It's more memorable, um, more likely to be shared, which is key for social media, and it's more persuasive. Uh, so those are my tips effectively, key learnings I suppose from the work we've done with Williams Warren. Um, just to give you an update, um, they recently entered a Williams Warren brewed Pilsner into the Asian Beer Awards and it beat the big international breweries. So um, had this little $6,000 brewery beating billion dollar breweries of Asia Pacific. So. It is the real deal, and if you want to try Williams Warren, uh, Ian has his showroom on Great South Road in Penrose. So make sure you go in there, have a yarn. I'm sure you'll be happy to um, do some beer tasting with you.